What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to basketball. The NBA Cup is back, and I am excited about it. The NBA Cup is something that was introduced last year. Uh, it was the first ever time that we had the in-season tournament, if you would, and now we're calling it the NBA Cup. It's this whole thing of them trying to make the beginning of the NBA season just a little bit more interesting for everybody else. I'm personally a big fan of this. I think it's a really cool move. I think it's something that to keep me interested in the middle of the season. They've added a bunch of features to kind of make it its own little thing its own little just like niche way to keep everybody interested and engaged and so we're going to be talking about it today because a lot of people still don't understand how it works my thoughts on it some of the talk that's happening around it what do you get if you win all of that type of stuff. So I think it's important to note before we even go any further, this is a concept that's been taking, like they didn't just get this out of thin air. This is basically how a lot of Europeans play soccer. They usually play in these little cups uh, during the season and they've structured it in the exact same way. And so when we talk about like how this cup actually happens, cause it's not just something that happens all at once. It's not like a basketball tournament per se, it's a cup. It's a little bit different. So I wanted to give that kind of context and background to be like, hey, this is how this works. This is why they're doing it that way. Or this is where they got the idea from and everything but the cup is happening on a couple different days throughout the week on what they're calling cup days uh, i think it's an important thing to realize that uh the first couple games already happened uh as of what what day are you guys gonna see so you're gonna see us on thursday so tuesday was the first day of cup games you probably saw the really cool courts yes i'm calling them cool courts because last year the courts were ass i don't care what anyone says those courts were crazy i think my chicago bulls had the worst one out of all of them it was just so red it was so crazy now they I think they've got some cooler courts and that kind of signifies like, hey, today's a cup day. We're playing for the cup right now. And we can see what each of the courts look like here. If I'm just looking through them, like the Celtics one looks super sick. I like this Hornets one. I actually think the Bulls one looks pretty cool. You'll see they're actually all like somewhat similar, which is kind of sick in my opinion. The Warriors were playing on theirs last night. I like this Pacers one. The Lakers one is going to look cool just because it's like the Lakers, right? Some of these other ones, I think the Timberwolves one looks sick with some of the trees and everything. I'm just, I'm just scrolling through them quick so we can see the Phoenix Suns one whenever you incorporate those colors I think it's really sick Sacramento they should have kept the purple like up here as well but otherwise I think it's kind of cool and they all have unique jerseys that go along with them if the, the Wizards might have the worst one why is why do they have a hand with a basketball okay I hadn't really looking too closely at this one I don't like this one as much it's your opinion at the end of the day but this one sucks Wizards can y'all just do something right please just please something but anyway the cup games they've already started right and so this is the way that it works the NBA strategically and I can't say this enough strategically breaks up all the teams into these different little divisions if you will it's still the east versus the west here but they've broken it up a little bit differently than how we normally see the divisions they actually use like an algorithm that based on teams records from the previous season seasons they match them up so let's just say like every single t every single like little bracket here has a bad team and every single bracket has a really good team and then they kind of work their way inwards right so it's kind of like schoolyard picking style if you would based off the records from last year that's why like you look at this one right you presume that like yeah the Sixers were a really good team the Nets were a bad team Hornets were a bad team Knicks were a good team and the Magic were somewhere in the middle right and so that's kind of how they determined it so that's kind of how these are formed and what's going to happen is let's take my favorite team the Chicago Bulls right the Chicago Bulls are going to play every single team in their little division here they're going to get two home games and two away games and based off the records of those teams are going to move on to the next phase the next phase they're calling the knockout round so eight teams are going to move to the knockout round which is an actual like single elimination like ncaa march madness style thing which i think is pretty sick in all honesty um so let's just let's look at it this way so eight teams are going to make it so the best two teams in each bracket are gonna make it right that's how it's gonna start and then two extra kind of like wild card teams will go if you will and that'll help determine like the order and how things are seeded and everything but yeah then you play single elimination knockout um it should be noted that all of these games being played right now in cup games also count towards the regular season except when you get to the championship game the championship game if you should make it that far technically is not a regular season game it is an extra game of basketball the stats do not count towards anything like towards your regular season stats it is a game that exists solely in the ether pretty much it's just it's just a single game right so that game is an extra game you get to play but it's okay because you get a reward if you win it. And that's that's kind of the beauty of it in that sense. So what this basically does is it's going through like how they actually pick all this stuff. It's it's a bunch of mumbo jumbo. 
if we want to take a look at the actual conferences themselves, like, I mean, we can try to infer who we think is going to win, like, but kind of the cool thing about this is, is there's a lot of little tiebreakers that they've put in place because what happens if like a couple teams go like two and two in their player? How do you decide who moves on from there within the little division? Well, the first tiebreaker is points scored, right? Or point differential. So teams are incentivized to keep their players in even if they're beating the shit out of people. And even if you're about to lose, you have an incentive to keep your stars on the court and to keep fighting because losing by 15 instead of 20 could be the difference you moving on to the next round or something so i think that that's pretty cool we've already started to see that take effect a little bit like even in this orlando magic game it took until like the last like couple minutes before they put the, the put before they put the scrubs in right and i think there was one other game where we kind of saw that happen i think it was this milwaukee game as well like they didn't really uh sub people in until the very end which that's awesome, right? Their, their teams are taking it seriously. It's competitive the whole way through then. Teams don't give up. I think that's a really valuable thing that they've added to the game, and I really enjoy it. And what's kind of cool, too, is this gives us an opportunity to see maybe not as good NBA teams and high-level stakes, right? Because already, looking at these games, I mean, we can, we can just take a look at it right here. The Pistons beat the Miami Heat, right? The Detroit Pistons. So they're now 1-0 in cup play maybe they're gonna get to move on to the tournament or something like that right the hawks beat the celtics and they didn't even have trey young last night so the celtics who a lot of people think are just gonna win the finals this year already 0 and one in cup play and that's what you're seeing right here 0 and one in cup play uh the bucks gotta win that's awesome maybe them being in the cup tournament and winning that gets them on track right the lakers were obviously the winners of it last year it didn't really translate to the playoffs but you know uh and then the trailblazers beat the timberwolves like anything anything could happen right i mean obviously there's still uh three more cup games for each of these teams but it'd be really cool to see like a, a Trailblazers Pistons game and some of you might say no that's not cool but I'd really like to see that in like a championship game or something like that I think that'd be sick to see those two kind of like younger teams going at it or something like that or maybe a, a Pistons go up against I don't know what's like a good Western Conference team like maybe the Suns go all the way and it's like whoa what a weird matchup that we have going on here it's just something you don't get to otherwise see so I think it's kind of interesting and so now why should you care right? Why should you care? And I think this is an important topic with this stuff. So obviously prizing and league honors. Um, basically, if you win this, you get to put a banner up, like all those types of things, right? Uh, the winning players also get, I think it's a million dollars still. So you get a million dollars if you win it. And you know, for some of the older guys on the team, it's maybe not that big of a deal. But for the younger guys in the team, it is a big deal. And I'll tell you this right now. I'll tell you this right now. A million dollars may not seem like much to like a LeBron James or something like that, right? It might not seem like it, but I can tell you for a fact, because I know a lot of NBA players that are, and I'll tell you, I know NBA players on max contracts. They're like, dude, if you tell me I get a million dollars for winning this basketball game right here, you best believe I'm on the floor. I'm going for it. And we saw that level of competitiveness in the championship last year. LeBron was going for that stuff, man. Like, it's just... It, that's that's what we see right we see that when when there's some actual something on the line and i think it's important but an even bigger note here because i see the conversations online i see people going like well like are you really gonna hang the banner for the cup or whatever i think you're a fucking loser if that's your mentality i'm gonna be so real with you right now and i don't like to talk this way often on the internet but i think you're a loser if you say that I want to win everything. I promise you I do. Like, I'm not the type of guy to flip like a Monopoly board, but I would prefer to win. And when I call myself like a basketball player and a basketball coach, I want to win every single night. So if you're telling me there's something new to win and I can go win, okay, there's this cup now, there's this tournament, uh, best team in the cup uh, wins the cup, right? I'm like, I would like to win that. I want to win that. So I'm going to go for it. And if you don't think that that's important, you're a loser. I guarantee you Kobe would have wanted to win the cup every single year. I guarantee you Jordan wanted to win the cup every single year. Is Do they care maybe as much about the cup as they do the NBA finals? Probably not. More people recognize the finals as being the greater level of achievement. And there's some statistical relevance for that, right? Because the best teams make it there statistically, right? You have to have the best record to get there. And then you have to beat every team four out of seven times. So statistically, the best team wins, right? There's a lot to hold with that versus the cup. And that's kind of the fun of March Madness, right? Is like upsets can happen. And that's the cool thing about this too. But 
I still want to win the cup. So if you don't want to win the cup, I just think you're a loser. I'm being completely honest with you. You're like, I'm flipping the switch as to when I want to be competitive with things in your in your play or your interest. I think you're a loser if you don't want that. So I, I just don't like that argument. If you have some sort of argument for why people shouldn't care about it, I'm going to disagree with you right away. And I'm just right away. And I'm going to call you a loser. I'm like, you just don't want it bad enough then. And I know that seems like a lame excuse, but that's the case. If you don't want to win the cup, you are a loser. All right, so moving on from this again, you guys are seeing this on Thursday. Friday is the next day of Cup games. My Chicago Bulls are playing the Cavaliers. I'm excited about it. I hope they can win, right? I'd love to see the Bulls get a cup or something like that. It's just, it's something to keep me interested, right? Because if you're a team like the Utah Jazz or something like that, and you're probably not going to the finals this year, maybe you can do something in the cup. And that's cool. And look, by the time the cup is over and everything, we're already almost getting to the all-star game or whatever. And you know, that's when most NBA fans kind of wake up, right? It's kind of after the all-star game and the, you know, football starting to wind down a little bit now. So basketball starting to pick up a little bit. That's just the natural kind of flows of sports interests and stuff. But I think it's interesting. That's that's what I want to see right now. It's something to kind of pay attention and watch for. I want to see who makes it like the Pacers made it really, really far in the cup last year. That was really interesting. And then they ended up going on a deep playoff run as well. And people were kind of like, oh, shit, the Pacers like, look at this. They they put something together here. They were playing really well. And then they went and played well in the playoffs. So maybe it's maybe it's a launching pad in some way. We don't have a lot of data yet, obviously, but I'm interested nonetheless. And I just want to throw this little video together to kind of one, just talk about it really quickly to be like, hey, this is the cup. This is what we're seeing. This is kind of how it works. because It's still new and it's confusing. And I had to read everything again to remind myself how it works. But regardless, I think it's fun. I look forward to seeing the jerseys in the courts. And if I can make one one request, we've got these super cool courts, right, that we're using for the cup. Can we just do this for the playoffs now too? Just just put like the NBA, uh, uh, the Larry O'Brien trophy or whatever, just like right here and let's let's have some custom courts for it too is it really that hard it just feels like it's more important i've talked to nba players about this they're like look i'm not gonna lie they're like when i step on on the onto the or step into an arena and i see the custom court and i see all the extra cameras and everything they're like the competitive side of me goes oh this is a big deal i should be playing harder right now because this is a bigger deal than a regular than a normal regular season game so like that effect does work. I want to see that. I want to see that in the playoffs as well. So just keep that in perspective and stuff. Um, obviously curious to hear your guys' thoughts as well. We'll be back with regular videos kind of um, the rest of this week. We'll probably do one other film breakdown on Friday. And then I've got a really fun project for you coming out uh, probably Tuesday of next week. I've already done the analysis. I've done this whole study about which teams develop talent the best. And so I think you guys will be very, very curious to see. I did a whole statistical analysis with it, use some AI and stuff. I think it's a lot of fun. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. As always, guys, like, subscribe and comment. I respond to every single comment to my YouTube channel and I intend to keep on doing so. Join the Discord. Link is in the description and we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks so much. Bye.